Firstly, this video applies to all MacBooks and even other laptops as well. So it's not just restricted to the MacBook Air M1. We've heard of lots of different pieces of advice. Wait till you get to 20% battery. Don't charge past 80%. But how many of these are actually true? I mean, are they true at all? Do we even care about them? Do we follow them? I know certainly people who change their laptops every year or the devices every year will not care about how often they have to charge it because they'll get rid of it within the year. Stick with me through this video and we can find out. Now let's start with the obvious piece of advice. You should not leave it on charge permanently. So many times have I seen maybe at work or in offices where a laptop is constantly left plugged in for all eternity. Literally, I do not understand. Well, I understand the convenience of it as well, but it's not doing anything good for the battery health. Now, obviously this isn't the case where it was a few years ago where you couldn't leave items on charge for quite a while. For instance, people used to leave their phones overnight and that used to cause the phone to explode or some other power issue. Devices are a lot better at controlling those sort of things and charging would stop if that ever happened. Safety features are a lot better now that prevent overcharging. Apple, for instance, which I'll talk about later, has gone optimized charging for all their devices, but leaving it charged in, and I'll tell you why it is not a good thing. For instance, if you're at 50%, battery and you pop it's on charge you're using it firstly the charging is going to happen slowly because that power is going to be split into two it, one bit is going to charge the battery one bit of the power is going to be supplied to you now the reason why you don't get the full power and your battery doesn't get fully charged when you're using it is to prevent any thermal throttling or any overheating and it is a safety feature so you will notice if you've got your iPhone plugged in even and you're trying to use it and you can't use it fully when it's on charge because it's being charged and you'll notice your phone your device your MacBook your laptop it will heat up a little bit particularly near the power port and certainly if you have fans within your device they're going to kick in. Another thing to keep in mind with workplaces when they do have laptops plugged in it's generally not your laptop so you want optimum power out of it. And let's be honest, work laptops can get replaced every year depending on the budget, but you'll keep them plugged in. And then obviously work laptops aren't replaced. They're generally older ones, so they're plugged in because their batteries only last maybe 10 minutes without the power cord. But again, if you're at work, it's not your laptop, so you don't care generally. You leave it plugged in. Now, as mentioned before with Big Sur and later on, Apple have introduced an optimized charging feature. Now, optimized battery charging is designed to improve the lifespan of your battery and reduce the time your MacBook spends fully charged. Now, when this feature is enabled, your Mac allegedly delays charging past 80% in certain situations. And your Mac is supposed to learn from your charging routine and aims to ensure that your Mac is fully charged when it's unplugged. So what about all this fully discharging your battery thing? This is not necessary. I know some pieces of advice say wait till 20%, wait till it's to 30%, but you don't need to. You can have it go all the way down to the end. I've done that with many of my Apple devices and guess what? They survived. I've charged my iPhone, Nintendo Switch and many other devices to 100% and guess what? They all have survived. Modern lithium ion batteries are designed that way. They're designed for that purpose to be drained and then to be charged again. Now obviously if you plan on keeping your device for 10 years you probably want to look into that wear and tear but most of us are keeping our devices for two to five years. We don't need to worry about that sort of thing. However I will admit it is bad if you're on 60% you plug it in you bring it up to 80. Then you bring it down to 40 you plug it in and you bring it up to 60%. Stuff like that isn't good for the wear and tear and even I wouldn't want to do that. Try to avoid using your MacBook when it is charging and that's purely because of what I said it before. Part of the power is going to be charging the laptop, part of the power is going to be given to you. So you won't be throttled as such, but you will notice a bit of heat generating. If you've got fans, it will kick in. With the MacBook Air M1 and the MacBook Air M2, there are no fans, so you might get a bit of thermal throttling. It is more beneficial for you to charge the device via the fast charge, leave it alone, then come back and then use it. Again, if you're not keeping your MacBook for 10 years, you shouldn't be worrying about this really. You can just plug it in and you can carry on using it. Is fast charging really bad for the MacBook or any other device? They're everywhere now and manufacturers are advertising the fast charging feature. A few years ago, yeah, they probably were bad for batteries, but the devices can take them nowadays. And even phones you get see packed with 40 watt chargers. I've used my MacBook charger for my iPhone. I've used a MacBook charger for the iPad Pro and my iPad Pro has survived. And the thing is, you've never heard of anyone whose device has died because they used a fast charger. That's just not gonna happen in this day and age. Ultimately though, it's your device, so charge it how you see fit. If you're someone who changes their device every single year, you're not gonna worry, you're gonna charge it how you want, especially since Apple don't actually give any restrictions 
on how you should charge your device. They don't. They simply say it's an optimized charging feature in case you want it, and there you go. If you're someone like me who wants to keep the devices between two to five years, you might follow it a little bit, maybe for that resale value. Now, if you're someone who are, is keeping a MacBook for 10 years, I don't know how you're gonna do that, but if you are, then you'll want to follow every single precaution there is, but don't bother, it's more stress and it's more hassle, and these aren't the batteries of the olden days. When I say the olden days, I mean about 10 years ago. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, as always, like and subscribe, and until next time.